What's going on guys? Welcome to your 34th Java tutorial again with me Travis and what we've got so far is just a simple window that has some buttons and all this stuff. All these buttons don't do anything. These check marks they look like they're doing something but in reality they really aren't as well as this text field and this text area here. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to add some functionality to these buttons to make them actually perform an action when we click them. Um, and what does that mean? Let's break it down real quick. So pretend you're like living on a farm with like a bajillion acres of just crops and stuff. We're going to call this farm J-Frame. Well, just forget that for the second. Just pretend you live on a farm and you're like, you know, I don't want to harvest all these crops by myself. That's just ridiculous. I need some kids and those kids need to do this work for me. So you go out and you like find some chick and you're like, hey, I need some kids. Let's do this. And bam, you know, pretty soon, nine months later, she's popping out some kids. So anyways, this chick pops out like 10 kids and you're like, okay, that I can, I can work with that. You're like, I have different sectors of my farm that I want these kids to work in and they can, you know, harvest the crops for me. And I can just be chilling, watching my TiVo, and everything's going to be cool. So, the moment these kids pop out, you're like, hey, kids, go over, harvest the corn. Hey, kids, go over there and pick, you know, some grapes or something. And the kid's like, wah, wah, I don't know what the F you're saying right now. And, uh, you know, you tell each of the kids to do something, and they're just crying, and they're like, you know, just staring at you crying. And you're like, hey, I told you to do something. Why aren't you listening? Now, if this story sounds kind of familiar, that's kind of what's going on here. We have all these kids within our farm, or I should say within our frame, and each of these kids have a certain area to work with. Um, you know, like the corn or the grapes. We'll call those areas our panels. Uh, we have a north panel, a center panel, and a south panel. And within each of those panels, we told those kids to do something, and since they're just like little babies, they don't understand anything, we're just going to set them out in the field over there and hope they get their work done. But you know, since they're just little babies, they don't understand anything. So we set them in their appropriate fields, or I should say again, panels, and then we're like, hey, why aren't you harvesting this stuff? Like, this is crazy. I told you to do something. Well, what's going on basically is we set up everything. We set our kids out in the field, our little babies. And, and we're hoping that they do work for us. But, you know, babies have to grow up. They have to understand language. They have to understand, like, the commands that you're giving them. And they have to hear or listen to those, those commands or whatever action that you want them to perform. They have to be able to understand that. And it's pretty much the same as in Java. Uh, we've created all these kids within different areas. But, again, they don't really do anything. So what we need to do is we need to let those kids know what's up. We need to allow those kids to listen to whatever action we tell them to do. So for this tutorial, we're going to learn about action listeners. Uh, just for our buttons that we have set up within our, what panel is this? Our panel one or P uh, panel. So all that we have done is we've basically set our kids out in the field or we've established our button out in the panel if you want to think of it that way. Since we're actually dealing with Java and most of you guys aren't farmers, I'm not a farmer even. I don't know even know why I'm using this example. But uh, basically all we've done is we set up our button. We haven't told our button what to do. All we said is, hey, button, you are a button and you're going to have a title of button one or button two. And button's like, okay, that's cool, whatever. Now we need to let the button understand what action we want it to perform. So we have to say, hey button, you're going to have to listen up pretty soon here. You're going to have to like attach some ears to you and you're going to have to listen to when some kind of an event happens. And when that event happens, I want you to perform an action. So all we need to do now is add those action listeners or you know, add some ears to our baby, however you want to think of it. Um, and we do that by referring to our variable of our button which we call B, and we're gonna say dot add action listener. Because every baby needs to have some ears. 
And same with all of our components. If we want it to actually do something, we need to add some ears or add some listeners to it to listen for actions that we're looking for. And so our button B now has an action listener within it. I'm gonna delete this here to show you guys what parameters it's looking for. I'm gonna say add action listener. As you can see, it takes an action listener type variable uh, past and its parameters. So we're just gonna click this here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say a new action listener, which is referring to the con basic constructor again. But I'm gonna hit control space as you can see, it sets up our basic action listener. Um, that's what we're looking for, uh, again, because that's what is taken within the parameters. We're going to click that there, and it's going to set up a ton of stuff for us. As you see here, all these lines of code were added for us, and we're getting an error right here because we need a semicolon. Because, again, this parentheses is closing off this parentheses bracket. So that's, again, basically just like one line of code. So we need to add a semicolon at the end to close off that code. So the things that we need to notice is within our action listener, we created a new bracket which has a different method uh, and we haven't really discussed the override yet. So you won't have to worry about that for this tutorial anyways. And so within our action listener, we have this method that is looking for, you know, actions. So basically all this is saying is it's setting up a method for us. Once we listen to an action, what action we want performed. As you can see here, action performed pretty awesome right and here we have an action event passed in or we get some information about an action event that occurred and we just call that action E uh, so we can refer to that E within here if we choose so now what we have done is we've referred to our button we've added some kind of ears to our button and we're basically like hey button I know you have a title already and I know this might be a lot of work for you but we're gonna have to ask you to listen for any kind of actions. So we're gonna add some action listeners to you. And Button's like, all right, whatever, I don't really care. And so we add those that action listener, which listens for an action or an action listener. And uh, since we don't have one, we're gonna create a new action listener here. And the method that that calls or it's looking for, the specific action we're looking for is something called action performed and we get some information about the actual action that was performed for a button. Now what we could do is just a system print out, um, you know, but, or a system out print, but that's pretty lame. So what we're gonna learn about in this tutorial as well is something called J option pane. And then what we can do is we can say dot show, um, and we have a few different options, show confirm dialog, show input dialog, and uh, show external dialog as well as you know some other ex uh, internal message dialog. You know, we who cares? You guys can experiment with that as well. The one that we're going to refer to is something called show message dialog. It takes a few things within its parameters. The first thing you're just going to set equal to null because we don't really care. And for our second parameter is the string that we want to output. So we're just going to say um, good job, kid. Uh, you har or you harvest your corn, and then what we can do uh, just to show you guys to refer to this uh, action event here, um, what that is actually being passed or whatever is actually being passed in. After our quotes, we're going to say plus and then e, and then we're going to hit uh, a semicolon at the end of this line here. Hopefully, you can see that. So all that's going to happen is it's going to show some kind of a message dialog. Again, the first parameter is null. The second parameter is some output that's going to say, like, good job, kid. You harvest some corn. And then it's also going to print E, which, again, E is referring to whatever's being passed in, which is an action event. So we're going to check out what E is even, because right now we have no idea. And, again, only B now has an action listener. So that B has the title of button one. So keep that in mind. We're gonna save this, run it. And as you can see here, nothing really occurs besides these check marks on our check, bo check boxes. And again, we can type in some information in our text area or type in some information in our text field. And again, for button two, that's gonna do nothing because again, that's the baby we left out in the great field that we really haven't told the list and we just kind of left it out there and we're like, hey baby, good luck. 
See you later. But our other baby that we left in the cornfield right here, we told it to listen for um, the actions that we tell it to do. And so once we click it, we get this bam. It says, good job, kid. You harvest your corn. And then the action that we get passed in uh, is java.awt.event action event action performed. And it gives us some information here. If you guys are curious, go ahead and read that because it's a good read. Um, no, actually, it's kind of boring. Um, but, you know, it gives us some information about whatever uh, action was performed or whatever just freaking happened. Again, all the extra code that was printed came from this plus E that we added here. If we just want to say, good job, kid, you harvested your corn, we can just say, you know, run it again, uh, hit our button one, and it creates something called a J option pane right here and it has an OK button and it shows the dialog. So we're just gonna hit OK and it closes that and there we go. That's kind of an introduction to adding an action listener and uh, actually doing something when an action is performed. So hopefully you guys uh, like that tutorial. I, it might have been a little bit confusing and if it was, I'm sorry. I just felt like I needed to do some kind of an analogy or something. Um, so I just decided to but if it was confusing completely understand because it's like 4 in the morning right now I should have been in bed like two hours ago, but I'll Probably like six hours ago, but you know, I usually anyways I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Have a good one and see you later